peoples, Arthwomp here, and welcome to episode 12 of the Great Ace Attorney Adventures. Last time, we were exploring around the cabin, and we ran to Sherlock Holmes, who is called Herlock Sholmes, who avoided copyright. And now, we are talking to him, and he basically is half off his rocker. We must ask him what he's deduced! We will have worked out the entire case already, I'm sure. Really? Why do I feel uneasy about this? I know that. I, I, I know, I'm sorry, I'm just experimenting with different voices, because frankly, at this point, I'm not, I don't want to do the Maya voice. I'm sorry, I'm determining. Maya voice, is it worth it? Is it worth it? I want to save my throat. Uh, Mr. Sholmes, what do you make of this? Shh, quiet! When I'm remining in the course of my deductions, nothing must disturb my work. Oh, uh, so sorry. Ah, an Indian curry, perhaps. What's he ruminating about? The lunch menu? Let's check this out. The pin number. My personal student number is engraved on the back here. If you lose your pin, they won't accept you as a UMI student at the university. You may not come in, they say. Of course, you can get a new pin made if you can just tell them your number. I've actually lost mine twice already, but I still don't know my student number by heart. I've always said to myself, I mustn't forget to write it down somewhere. But then I forget not to forget that. Okay, yeah, they he's just gonna say it again. And let's rotate it. Ah, the symbol of Yuma University. Every student wears this pin with pride. It's funny, but most emblems seem to be either round or rectangular. I like the spike design, even though it doesn't really make any sense. Although, it does cause problems. Lots of students end up cutting their fingers on their badges. Perhaps if it was the idea of one of the founders. A sharp pin for a sharp mind or something. Paper seal. Sticky tape. Ah, this must be the remains of the glue that you... I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm trying to think of a new voice. Okay, okay, I've got it. Ah, these must be the remnants of the glue you used to stick the paper seal on your wardrobe. Mia's not here. Mia, so she gets the Kayate voice. Congrats, you get Kayate's voice now. He goes, frankly, I am not going to deal with three more cases of the Maya voice. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ace Attorney, I was fine with doing my voice for four cases, three cases, four cases, things like that. But really, not full four cases here. I'm sorry. That's right. It was a it was pulverized rice. Pulverized rice? Yes, I pulverized some of the rice from my evening meal, even though it broke my heart. Broke your heart? What do you mean? Remember, I'm a stowaway on this ship. All I had to eat were Kazuma's leftovers. Even though a couple of grains of rice could have meant the difference between life and death. Oh, my... Oh my, it must have been hard off for you, Naruto-san. Buy us some glue with me as it happens. You're welcome to use it this evening. Oh, thank you very much. Okay, much better. Much better. My throat is not in pain anymore. You drew the characters for this paper seal, didn't you, Naruto-san? They're such bold, they're such bold they're strokes you've made. You're looking at a man who came aboard inside a trunk. Those brush strokes needed to make a statement. If they found me in that wardrobe, those Russians would have hurled me into the freezing cold ocean. I'm sure none of the crew members would have done anything like that. Hmm, well, I'm not so sure. They would have forced you to wash the dishes in the galley until you were on death's door or something like that. Wash dishes until I was on death's door? That's a lot of dishes. I'm sorry, call me weak, call me whatever, but frankly, the Maya voice was causing me pain. It was causing me immense pain, and frankly, I couldn't do it. Okay, present the paper seal. Hmm, I've never seen anything like this. Most extraordinary writing. You said the same thing earlier this morning, I think. Indeed, what's well, uncommon is it's so remarkable. I felt the need to say it anew. Yes, I do believe these characters may be a crude attempt at Japanese script. What? Mr. Naruto, I, I don't like to be the one to tell you this, but your handwriting's crap. 
I think Mr. Holmes is trying Holmes is trying to say that your handwriting is a little bit untidy. Is he making fun of me? Yes, that smug look. That's the look of someone who is making fun of you. Converse. Great detective, air quotes. So, you're a great detective, are you? Sorry, what was your name again? Indeed, I'm none other than the right name, mate. Hey, look, Shams. Oh, I see. You're German? Herlock, was it? No, no, I have no hair. I mean, I have hair. Please go to Shams. You can read all about my exploits in this exciting London publication. Oh yes, Rand's Magazine, full of wonderful short stories and interesting articles from Great Britain. I never miss an issue. I have seen, I have it sent from England especially. Ah uh, yes, here it is. The Adventures of Herlock Sholmes. So what, you get a translated version, Susano? Because really, I think that you would have been able to translate at least more of the dire, more of those notes from Giselle, from Z Gisette, and I forgot to turn the timer on. So, so you're the protagonist in a series of short stories, then? Indeed I am! And you've read so many of your own stories, you've started to think you really are a detective. Make no mistake, I'm not the poor deluded fellow you take me for. I only get that way out I smoke about four kilos of opium. Your infer- your inference is backwards. Backwards? My trusty biographer records my greatest detective event, achievements and chronicles them in the magazine. My ten-year-old roommate, who I often trap on the several bags of opium. She used the opium for as a mattress, she used it as a pillow, she used it for everything. I mean, all, I have so much opium in my apartment. You're a biographer, do you? Does it everyone? Mine goes by the name of Dr. Wilson, presently keeping shop in London. Dr. Wilson? I will say, thanks to that publication, I've been fantastically busy as of late. Well, at this very moment, I'm returning from Asia, having solved the mystery of a cursed royal crown. Really? I can't work out whether I should take this man seriously or not. Deduction, you say, is to me a science. Logical reasoning in its purest form. A, a science? Really? Oh, just you don't know how good it feels to actually use the Kayade voice. Thank you, Kayade voice. You are saving my ass. The, ast the astute observer notices even the most subtle of reactions in his subject. A furtive glance, a twitch of the muscle, a slight inclination of the posture, fingernails, arm sleeves, furrows in the skin, all of these things are data. Right. And the train logician makes deductions from this data in the blink of an eye. The ultimate conclusion is, without fail, the truth. As I demonstrated only a few short moments ago. How can you look me in the eye and claim that? Did you say I have done both for I have returned both for obse observation deduction and fame? That is what makes me the one only hair. No! Herlock Holmes! Okay, I do have to admit that was a good joke. <laughs> have you managed to deduce anything about this particular case yet? I have all managed to deduce anything, my dear fellow! I used my x-ray goggles! Who do you suppose this girl with the copper in this most cutting hiding place? That's right, it was me! All me! It was none other than the world's greatest detective before you now, Mr. Herlock Holmes! Ah, I see, in other words. I'm in these now because of him. When I became anxious about Kazuma-sama this morning, I summoned all the crew members to force the cabin door open. I dog confused my sleep amongst their numbers, guiding entry to the scene of the crime. I knocked one of them out, stole his clothes, and shoved him on the ocean. Yes, luckily for everyone, the great detective, Hanok Shams, was on board. And the handcuffs seem to be an excellent fit, Mr. Naruto. Uh-huh. The very moment I laid eyes on the scene, two facts were immediately apparent for me. Oh, really? Two facts, you say? 
More talk, more conversation. Mr. Sholmes, please tell us. What two facts were apparent to you when you came to this cabin this morning? Oh, yes, but fast, that may be precise. The two facts in question were immediately apparent to me. Yes, yes, I understand. But what were they? They were facts that were apparent to me. Yes, but what were they? Facts that were apparent to me. I am I supposed to say this, and I'm here to elucidate. The two facts I deduced from a mere momentary glance at the scene of the crime were as follows. Number one, the cabin was locked from within, rendering escape for the culprit to answer the question. Number two, the victim was rushing and killed following a dispute with an acquaintance. Hold on, Mr. Sholmes, what made you think the victim was rushing? Observe his dying message left by the victim on the floor. I don't even know. I, I can't, I don't know Russian, I'm sorry. That is the Russian word for wardrobe. Do you, do, you, uh, do, do you really think Kazuma-sama could have left a dying message in Russian? In their final moments, many fall in their native tongue, filling their head. For this young man, Russian. Kazuma was Russian, was he? Initially, I could say, Gerob may be the name of the killer. I determined Robert Gard, perhaps. Garderob. Okay, yeah. Garderob. But in the interest of fairness, I decided it would be wrong not to look inside the wardrobe here, at least with, me, with my x-ray goggles. Where you found Mr. No Where you found Mr. Naruto sleeping soundly. Quite so, I found you, the renowned Russian revolutionary killer. Why is it that I'm Russian too? Oh, I observed that you were wearing the same attire as the victim. In other words, you were acquainted. And if my memory serves, the outfit is the traditional dress of the Russian people. They dress as university students from Japan. Our school uniforms are the traditional dress of the Russian people? I, I had no idea. And I had no idea a detective could get something so wrong. I took a photograph of the victim in the message, and that more and that I might analyze it for possible in details. I.e. I go up to what I go up to Wilson within our apartment and I say, Wilson, Wilson, what is this? What is this? Homesy, I'm busy! The LPM is crushing me, Homesy! This this was the immediately taken after the young man was discovered before the body was removed. Yes, Kazuma had already been taken away when I woke up. Okay, I may turn down the her the Sherlock voice. This is the first time I actually see him like this. Are are you alright, Mr. Naruto? Oh, um, yes, thank you. The foreground of the crime scene has been added into the court record. Can I ask you something, Mr. Sholmes? What? Pray. You mentioned Russia before as well, didn't you? You know, when you said I was a fearsome revolutionary fleeing from Russia and all that? Ah, yes. The train of reasoning that led me to the truth. Would you mind explaining that train of reasoning to me, do you think? Tsar Thwomp cannot read Russian. Certainly, if it interests you. How many times I'm not Russian and I don't speak Russian? Um, can we talk about your deduction before? The things you conclude about me, I mean? Ah, the now famously excute, accurate, troubling predicament you find yourself in. Actually, it was the other details that I was more hoping to discuss. You know, the merciless Russian revolutionary and assassin of 16 part? Ah yes, the more sorted details. It was a fairly commonplace deduction. Here we have this morning's paper. The main headline reads... Revolutionary villain Bosch Bolshevik flees Russia via Shanghai. This vessel made a poll call to Sh at Shanghai yesterday, and last night the, ro the young Russian was murdered. Since when was Kazuma a Russian? It sounds like Mr. Sholmes co has concluded he was Russian because of what Kazuma Sama wrote at the floor. Hey, I am actually getting used to the, to the different name. It was a simple act of reasoning to realize that the culprit of this crime was the same merciless, 
was this revolutionary. One who would kill the very man who helped to escape after his true identity was discovered. Yes, you... Virian Bolshevik! No, no! How could, th how could that be me? I don't look anything like this man! Just look at his face! Well, you are a fearsome revolutionary, after all. Therefore, you have no doubt learned to revolutionize your appearance as well. Oh, please. And I might add, your name does not appear on the ship's passenger list. Yes, anymore. Well, that's because I'm a stowaway. What about the other details? The 16 victims of assassination blowing up the Crystal Tower. Ah, yes. The journalist clearly interviewed the man and printed all of those procured parti eh, particulars in the article. The deeds the man has perpetrated thus far, and those he has brought in. Yes, everything about this revolutionary Bosch Bolshevik was included. There can be no mistake. D do revolutionaries usually agree to interviews with newspaper reporters, I wonder? Yes, and then just I'm imagining Dork sitting down with all these newspaper articles. So, let's go over my revolutionary plans for Karain! And what about the part where you said that I was returning from Afghanistan? Also quite clearly stated in the article. Bolshevik is recently returned after a period of subversive activities in a war-torn region of Afghanistan. Where even is, is it anyways? This Afghanistan place. Here, take the paper for yourself. As a little memento of this great deduction. Oh, um, uh, thank you. I've absorbed all that is of uh, interest to me with these pages, and but I see no rubbish bin nearby. The article about the revolutionary has been entered into the court record. And you may find the article on the back pages page of interest as well. On the back, cast your eyes over it sometime if the interest takes you, though you may need someone to interpret. Hmm, this is interesting. Have you found something relevant, Naruto-san? Well, no, I... I mean, it looks like it might be interesting. I can't read a single word, I'm afraid. No, no, nor can I, but look at this picture. Perhaps it's about a beautiful young Russian princess, do you think? She is very pretty, isn't she? I suppose you enjoy articles like this, do you? I, I don't know, I can't make any sense of it. All I know is that it makes the war trove less lonely. Ah, oh, I'm glad you noticed this article. Ah! How'd you get in here? How'd you get into this scene of investigating? I don't know, I just go here. I, I just blinked, I'm all done in here. Why is my mouth not moving? Why am I just a sprite on a screen? Allow me to give you a short summary of its contents. Oh, thank you. He pops up everywhere, this Mr. Sholmes. It's about the disappearance of a young lady last night. When I am prima ballerina in the Novak Ballet disappears from Shanghai. During a performance in Shanghai, the famous dancer was reported missing. She is, of course, the talented young Nikolina Pavlova. Why are Russian names so hard to remember? It would appear that, it would appear that woman was engulfed when she was found missing in her dressing room. Wearing the diamond the eyes you see in the picture, which is worth some 20,000 rubles. Oh, how much is 20,000 rubles? I have no idea, but I'm quite sure it must be an unbelievable sum of money. susano sans eyes are shining like diamonds themselves. The tiara is property of the Nova, Nova Vich Ballet. And it would seem the director is bizarre to herself with worry. Yes, I'm not surprised. The company is most anxious to recover both Miss Pavlova and the valuable tiara. They've requested international assistance at all ports with sailings to Great Britain. Could this be another case of a Russian fleeing his or her country? It does seem to be the Russian thing to do. I'm not even going to take the mind that was a, a response, Mr. Naruto! Okay, we've read that. It's all written in Russian. I couldn't hope to read it. I suppose it would hurt just a glance at the article. Maybe there might be a picture or two. What were you investigating? The desk. He was making his lover. Before we started talking, you were examining Kazuma's desk, weren't you? Kazuma! Ah, yes, the victim. Did you know? Did you know anything useful? Anything at all? 
Observe for a moment the desktop of the victim. We see that the victim was engaged in penning some text. London, London Diary, because Uma was keeping notes on the trip. Ah, uh, ah, uh, but... I don't think you sh I don't think you should read his private writings. It would upset people. Tragic. And sometimes you ought to perhaps eludicate before the act of reading. You, you mean you've read already? It is my business today what other people do, yes. Believe it or not, I know a smattering of Japanese. And I am a master when it comes to eavesdropping on people. I do it all the time from my apartment, from my flat's window. And then I was, she's trying to wriggle her way past the bags of opium. Hi, Jay, stop trying on the neighbors. We're getting looks again and complaints from Scotland Yard. Oh, I see. Well, you're about to know what Susato's take, what Susato takedown is. I will end your life. You will die right here, Sholmes. I will end your I will end you unless you end yourself first. Here's the cuz here's the rope. Take it. Do what you need to do. Susato san, aren't you going to throw the detective with what your trademark takedowns? Ah uh, Yeah. I'm sorry, Naruto san, what on earth do you mean? Life is so unfair. Anyway, so return to the matter hard. Now I mean this diary belongs to the victim. It would appear the final sentence is incomplete, as if the author were cut short. Tebe, what is the nature of the writing? Try to be besides the detail. Oh, but I thought you knew Japanese. Smattering, a smattering, dear boy, a smattering. Sayonara, bonsai, mikado, nado, nado. I trust you're substantially impressed. Sayonara, bonsai, mikado. Na Nida Nado Nado. I oh, trust you're suitably impressed. Ha! But this star is littered with complicated looking characters, of which I can read precisely none. Ha <laughs> Yeah, I love how his laugh is just a combination of Christoph and Clavier's laughs. Basically just the Gavin brothers united into one being. We have fused. Ah, bro, we must fuse into our ancestor. You're right, Clavier. You, Sean! Boom! And then Clavier and Christoph touch their fingers together to become Sherlock Holmes. They become, Sh they become Herlock Sholmes. They fuse, and I'm like, Oh no! The fop is becoming even more of a fop! So what was all this showing off before then? If you'd be so kind as to show me, I would be very happy to read to you, Mr. Sholmes. I'm much obliged, my dear madam. So our form's throat is dying. The final entry here is in Kazuma-sama's diary consists of just two short sentences. The first reads, 1.23 a.m. I hear a faint whistling sound. 1.20, and the other reads, 1.24 a.m. Chicken was bad. Give it all to Naruto. Oh, oh no, I have to... A whistling sound. Hmm, these are very deep waters. Pray, go or... The second sentence reads, 135 a.m. What looks like some sort of speckled band is dangling from the ventilator grill. A speckled band? What on earth does that mean? I have no idea. I've never heard that expression before. Hmm. The ventilator grill, you say? The man was presumably referring... To the lattice there on the wall, which connects to the adjoining cabin. Yes, the adjoining cabin. Kazuma's diary has been entered into the court record. So, I believe I'll give you enough to consider for the time being at least. Ah, do you have somewhere to go? As it happens, the victim's writings in his diary have piqued my interest. That means it warrants further investigation, I believe. And if I'm um, still too long, the seasickness takes hold. Oh, I suppose you're thinking of investigating the cabin next door, which the ventilator shaft connects to. Great deductives are a curious breed. Our minds will bear stagnation. We crave mental exaltation. So, yes, I intend to investigate. Hence, the truth will become clear soon enough. Do you think perhaps that we could go with you? Hmm, no. That would be somewhat complicated. What? Why? Why? 
A simple glancing over it should reveal the answer. Oh, these. After all, you're the prime suspect in this matter. No. There's no point trying to turn it into a question. You're the one who decided I was the culprit in the first place. Whatever do you mean? I have no recollection of naming you as the culprit at any point. But I'll rearrange the evidence to make it appear that you're the culprit. You must be joking! No, you just said it! Only a moment ago! Dear me, you are certainly misguided. I would have I would have no cause to say such a thing. Well, actually, Mr. Sholmes, I did hear you say that too. You're quite sure? Well, that's very strange. I wouldn't have said you had the face of a criminal, you know. Not really. So what, were you looking at my knees before? Some great detective you are. Well, anyways, that was then, and this is now. What do you mean? What well, I mean, sir, is this. If you are the culprit, then you must pay, play the part more convincingly. Roll over and accept your fate. <laughs> now he's just being plain rude. And off he goes, having just laughed in my face. His sense of humor is as swiss as his name. Now, rudo Sam, what are you doing standing there for? Huh? You must go and investigate the cabin next door as well. Aren't you forgetting something? What about these? There's no way I can... Hiya! After... After Kazuma-sama spent his dying moment struggling to leave us a clue, you're willing to give up? You're just gonna roll over and accept your fate? Ugh. As if you gave me any choice in the rolling over part. I think we have some investigation to figure, fish off in here first, don't we? Let's carry on examining what we can in this cabin while we wait for a chance to slip next door. Good idea! The situation doesn't look good for me, but there are still things I can do to help myself. And I owe it to Kazuma to do everything I can to find a way out of this. And to bring the real culprit to justice. Thanks to that so-called detective, I'm even more stuck inside this cabin than I was before. For the time being, I suppose I'll just have to focus my efforts on investigating here. Okay, let's check around. Aha, here's the door. When I was out for it, when I went out for that for help and the crewman forced the door open. This bolt had been firmly closed. It's a quite it's quite a small bolt and not particularly sturdy, and it just slides across to secure the door shut. But still, with the door bolted, there would be no way to get in or out of the cabin, that's for sure. It's no wonder everyone suspects me. When she glares at me like that, I feel tense all up and down my spine. I, I remember reading once a detective novel. The culprit used a needle and a thread to draw a bolt across from the outside of the, the room in a situation like this. Yes, that's a glamour trick, isn't it? I'm an avid of detective stories myself. It gives me ideas of how to hide the bodies of people who don't buy me food. But the door on this cabin has its frame are made of metal, and they seal together perfectly. There'd be no possibility of using the needle and thread trick here, I'm afraid. When she glares at me like that, I feel pins and needles all up and down my spine. Oh, look over there. The crew... The crewman, do you mean? He wasn't there before, was he? That's what I thought. Why don't we try talking to him? Probably because I'm likely to get yelled at again. But I suppose I could try. Let's examine you. Is that... Is something wrong, Naruzan? Oh, no. It's just that crewman standing by the door. I can't help but feel like I've seen somewhere before. Oh, yes, you're right. He does look... He does look familiar. Excuse me, sir. Yes, what can I do for you? I return once more. I recognize that face, but it can't be. <coughs> ahem, ahem, ahem. Is it? It is. I, I didn't know you were here, Inspector Hosenaga.
hello again. What, what are you doing here? I'm seeking to sang hide in order to teach that little beach and Jaziel, what happens when you use me as a translator and then toss me aside when you're perfectly capable of speaking the language? You don't, t you don't hide that from me, and then you don't smash my evidence. I love that bottle, and so I am going over and I'm finishing her the job. I think that should be my line. I was so stunned when I saw you. My heart stopped. I said, what the hell is he doing here? How the hell did he go on my ship? He's gonna strap me out. Maybe we could team up. Nearly stop. I hope. I received some special orders to go undercover as a member of the crew and board the ship. Again? You certainly seem to enjoy undercover work, Inspector. If there's anything I could do to help you, please ask. I never expect to see this man on board. But perhaps this person can help me out with this hopeless situation. Yeah, we'll finish up in this room and then we'll basically be done. Inspector, can I show you this? What the? Is that the a fabled Imperial Yuma University pin badge? Um, I'm not sure if it's really fabled exactly, but... So, you're a genuine student, then. Sorry? Nothing like me with my regular schooling. You're something much greater. Is that what you were trying to say? Um, can I have my badge back, please? No, it's mine! Ah, this is the paper seal that was stuck over the wardrobe door this morning, isn't it? That's right, to try and stop the cabins do it opening up and discover me. Well, too bad, I was cleaning your room the entire time, and I was like, I'm being nice here. Wouldn't it have been better to write it in English if you, if you didn't know Russian? Maybe, but... Offered a food up paper amulets like this are a part of our culture, Inspector. And I thought... I, and I thought if it made it, if I made it look creepy enough, people would be too scared to want to look inside. It isn't easy being a stowaway, is it? Um, have you seen this photograph yet, Inspector? <laughs> ahem, uh, eh, ahem. Oh dear, are you alright, Inspector? Yes, sorry. I'm fine. I was hoping to hide my upset with a fit of coughing and sputtering. I'm usually very good at it. But trying to stifle my feelings seems to have stifled my cough this time. It's also sad! Asogi-san was such a promising young man. The Empire had such high hopes for him. Now we're just stuck with you, Naruto. I had such high hopes for him, even though I'm just a detective. I thought he would be the first prosecutor not to cut my salary. <laughs> Ahem, 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 ahem. We're all going to miss you, Kazuma. Can I show you this newspaper, Inspector? I'm sorry, but I can't read Russian very well. Oh no, that's alright. I know what it says. So you just wanted to point out that your university level linguistic talents. Is that it? Because I take I can tell you right now that there's more to life than just grades. Can you snap a man's deck with your bare hands? No, you can't. Sorry? Nothing like me with my regular schooling. You're something much greater. Is that what you're trying to say? Sorry, forget I mentioned it. Okay. Yeah, just Hosanaga just getting pissed off. Just, just real Nasuke going in with his grand schooling. What's that? It's Kazuma's diary. Just before he died, Kazuma-sama wrote something rather strange in his diary. Strange? In what way? He wrote what looks like some kind of spectacle band is dangling from the ventilator grill. A speckled band. That is strange. Yes, we're still trying to work out what, uh, what he meant by that. But what I'd like to know is... Don't tell me. The ventilator, is it? You're ready to Inspector! 
That ventilator clearly joins the next door cabin. That's right. So if we could investigate in there, we might be able to work out what the speckled band was. All right, then. I can't leave this cabin at the moment. I'm stuck here until we arrive at the next port. The captain has given me a strict order to guard the scene of the crime, you see. But I'll have to entrust the investigation to you. Really? You're, you're willing to do that? Yes, as long as you don't leave the first class cabin area. I'm afraid I can't remove those handcuffs, though. But what about the captain? Aren't you going against his direct orders? He said guard the crime scene, not you. I'm a man of my word. And I promise you that I'll lay my life on the line if that's what it takes to convince the captain. After all, I can overthrow him. I am stronger than him. I will throw him into the sea and I will assume the role. And I shall name the ship Le Carnival. And it shall be beautiful. And I shall serve as the head waiter as well as the captain. I'll be, the ca I'll be Captain Waiter. And I will rule the ship with an iron fist. And then I shall bring... We shall attack Giselle, Brett. We will attack Miss Brett, we will team up, and I shall have my revenge. I fear to keep a Sogi san safe. This is the least I can do. Thank you. Let's use the moment then, Naruto san. Let's select move, and we can leave the, this cabin at last. Move. All right, let's see what we can find out. We'll do that in the next episode. Wait, can we converse? Special orders. We'll talk to him, and then basically we'll be done. So, so what are your special orders this time, Inspector? Yes, and why are you dressed as a member of the crew? I like the sailor outfit. It makes me feel slim and confident in my physique. I'm so sorry. Hmm? This is all my fault. I take full responsibility. For, for what? My orders were to act as Asogi-san's bodyguard. And I failed. It was Minister of Justice Jigo Jigoku who pushed for this overseas study tour to go ahead. And he entrusted me with ensuring that Asogi-san reached Great Britain without being assassinated. Assassinated? How? How could that be? How could that even be possible? I'm not sure, but these are complicated times. There are tensions between the world's greatest powers. Minister Jigoku said we should be prepared for all eventualities. This is incredible. I, I don't believe it. Kazuma-sama was assassinated. Obviously, we can't, couldn't give Asogi-san a visible security escort. Which is why I'm undercover now, posing as one of the crew. I see. And I didn't take my eyes off him the entire time we've been on board. From morning until night, every day, even when he was bathing. I handed him a towel. But I never imagined it would end happen here, inside his own cabin, not here on the first class deck. Not with the peasant rabble below. I failed miserably at my assignment, and Asogi-san is dead as a result. I'm a disgrace. All I can do is humbly apologize. Inspector. So, if there's anything all at all I can do to help, just say the word. Or should you investigate? I can't leave this cabin at the moment. I'm stuck here until we arrive at the next port. The captain has given me a strict orders to guard the scene of the crime, you see. I'll have to entrust the investigation to you. Really? You want to do that? Yes, as long as you don't leave the first class cabin area. I'm afraid I can't remove those handcuffs, though. But what about the captain? We already read this. Ahem, ahem, ahem. I'm a man of my word. And I promise you that I'll lay my life down the line if that was means to convince the captain. After all, I failed to keep a Sogi san safe. This is the least I can do. Thank you. Let's see the moment then, Naruto san! Yes, yes, select move. <coughs> okay. Anyways, I think now would be a good time to end things off. I really appreciate that you stuck around to watch this episode. You're a great viewer, and I hope you come back with the next one. If you like this video, like, subscribe, comment, share, do as you want. And without seeing you next time, bye.